Hi, this is Barb Hedrick. In this video, we are going to focus on communication. Like any other area of life, communicating information can be complex at times. However, Epic does have some tools that will help make this task easier. In Basket is Epic's communication hub. Think of it as a folder structure that contains all types of messages, tasks, reminders, results. It is the communication hub within Epic. To get to Basket, when you log in to your login, it is this third tab that looks like a mail envelope. When I click that, I am in Basket. I can click to expand to see different folders that are present in my Basket. I think of the folder structure in Epic in four main categories. So these different types of folders typically fall into four, one of four categories. The first category is clinical information that has been put in to the chart, either as an encounter, uh, an office visit, an order that needs a result, uh, a telephone note, it's a medication refill request. This is clinical information that is documented somehow within an encounter that has been routed to you for actions. The second category is just general messages that don't necessarily pertain to patient care. In Epic, these are called staff messages. They're accessed using this new message button, which has different types of staff messages. I will say that this is not an intended workflow uh, that we plan to use at MNA because this is really covered by other things that you use, such as your organizational email. So this is not something I'm going to focus on today for training because we don't intend to use that workflow. But I do want to make you aware that if you use this button or new message or one of these types, it's not really a clinical message for the purpose of documenting in the chart. So I would steer clear of that button at present. The third bucket is what I call reminder messages, tickler messages. They're messages I can send to myself or I could send it to someone else. It is not intended to be the actual documentation of an action, but rather a tickler to remind me to do something and then document it in the appropriate way. And we'll look at these uh, in a little bit. The fourth category, I just call these messages to and from the patient. So it's messages that are typically going back and forth between Epic and my charge. All right, let's take a little look at some of these so we can start to connect the dots. So I'm gonna start with that first bucket, which is clinical information that has typically been put into some type of an encounter. When you see a patient in the office and you create an order or your staff after the fact create an order for like lab results or imaging results, those results are gonna come back to you for review. They're attached to that office visit encounter or a lab only encounter. When those messages come back, they will file in a folder called results. Right now I have two results to view in my chart. If I single click, it opens up a preview where I can see those messages, result messages. I can take action on this result message in one of many ways. If I simply saw the message, saw the lab result, it's a normal result. I really don't need to do anything more with that result. I can simply hit the done button and be done with that result. Sometimes though, I want to always send certain types of lab results over to my MA because I want them to call the patient and let them know how their lab results work. I could simply forward that message over to my MA, or if this is an action I'm doing all the time for certain types of results, I can create something called a quick action. Over here in this corner, there's a button that says create new quick action, but I'm gonna show you one that I've already created. So this one is called call patient with results. I've named that quick action what it means. It's my quick action to ask someone to call the patient let them know about their results. Now in this quick action, I have pre-typed whatever message I want. Please call the patient regarding lab results. I've also selected 
to have that note file into the chart as documentation that I reviewed the, the lab result. So by doing this, I can kind of one and done. I can look at the message. I can create a quick action, which shows that I actually communicated and passed the ball over to my MA or whomever to call the patient. I also have pre-selected to mark this message as done when I'm completed. That way I don't have to send this quick action or send this message to my MA and then come back and done my message to clear it out of my inbox. It's one click and done. If I wanted to route this or have my MA or my clinical pool pre-selected in this quick action, I can do that or I can leave it blank because I don't know who I want to send this to each time. So I left it blank so I can select who I want this to go to. In this case, I'm going to send it to my pool. So P space M and A and C is going to pull up the list of your pools in M and A. And I'm going to send this back to the clinical pool, which is a group. A pool is a group of users that can all see the same messages within a folder. So instead of trying to remember which MA is here today, we typically are going to send things to clinical pools. That way, if your designated MA happens to be sick that day, that message is not stuck in that one person's in basket. It is a share folder that any clinician uh, can pick up. Once I do that, I can simply say accept. And now my message is gone. Because I also said done this message when I send it. So it's very simple to use these quick actions and it gives you some flexibility um, to create all different types of quick buttons for common ways that you're responding to result messages. Now, if I didn't want to use a quick action, I could have just hit done. I could have just forwarded it over to someone. I also have the opportunity when I'm reviewing results to look at things in the chart. So perhaps I get this result back and I want to know, well, how have their you know, glucose has been running over time? I could click on synopsis view, which is like a lab trend, and be able to see a trend of their glucose over time if I needed to. I can also look at the entire chart if I wanted to. One other thing, um, let's say I get a result message back and I call the patient with that message and I wanna document that phone call because I've called them with their results. I could, from this screen, launch what's called a telephone encounter. So I'm just going to say, create this encounter. And now I have the opportunity to go in, say I made an outgoing call. Contact name is the patient. You've got a quick button to say who the patient is. And I could just make a comment. I could say left message if I couldn't reach them, if I just wanted to say, um, let patient no. Oh. We're good. Get accept that and sign this telephone encounter. It's wanting me to enter in another note. Labs were good. Sign encounter. And it will take me right back to my in basket. So you can do quite a few things from uh, this in basket view. If I wanted to, um, if I was on the receiving end of a telephone message, so the patient called the front desk and they sent me a telephone message, it's going to file in this bucket called patient calls or office communication. So this is where you would look um, to reply back to someone that sent you a telephone message. So I can see a kind of a log or a trail of information on this patient. And again, I can reply back. I can reply back to sender. I can forward it. I can create quick actions in this folder type as well. Another folder that's going to be important for you all as providers to really um, look at each day, especially after you have a clinic day, is anything that's your open encounters. 
So open encounters refers to any type of visit or encounter that you've started and not completed. So when you're seeing the patient, especially when you first go live on Epic, it may take you a little bit of time of learning the workflow. So perhaps you put in information when you're with the patient, like the follow-up and whatnot, you come back to your office at the end of that clinic day to finish documenting your notes and completing your encounters. But by chance, you might have missed one of those patients. This is your backstop. So if you go into your um, in basket and look for my open encounters, it's going to show you any type of encounter that you possibly missed. So you can go back in and actually sign that encounter. In this case, if I realized, oh, yeah, I finished that one. I did everything that I needed to do. I just must have forgot to hit the sign encounter button. I can sign the visit straight from in basket with this button up here. All right, so that is kind of a general overview of types of things you can do when you have clinical information that's coming through, being routed to you, shared with you um, in, in basket. The second category was the staff messages. I think I reiterated, we're not intending to use that right now at MA. The third category I mentioned was reminder messages. So if I want to send myself a reminder, it's going to file in this bucket called patient reminders. So these are ticklers to myself. It's not intended to save to the chart, it's intended to prompt you to remember to take an action such as place an order for today or document a refill or whatnot. It, it's a tickler. To create a reminder message, I could use my quick button in my Epic toolbar. Remind me, it's going to default to myself as the person intended. To uh, say, call patient about uh, test. If I want to just link it to the current patient I've been working with, I can, or I can search for a patient. M and A. I'm just going to do this one to Amy. Reminder to call a patient to see if she got labs done. So again, this is not necessarily intended to save to the chart. You can see that right now. Message will not be permanently saved to the chart. It's just a reminder to myself. So if I actually did call the patient and found out she had her labs done and where she got them done, I'm going to document that perhaps in a telephone encounter that we looked at a second ago. But I can do reminder messages and I can delay those reminder messages. So perhaps I want something to come back and three months from now. I don't want to cluttering up my in basket right now. I just want that tickler to come back to me in three months. I could delay that message and it would not show back up until the uh, due date or the delay send date. All right, so I've now sent that message on. There are going to be times uh, likely that you want someone else to have access to your in basket for a cross coverage, or perhaps since the result messages, those lab results are going to be coming back by default to you as the ordering provider, but your staff might want to be able to go in and just take a look because you're busy doing Dallas's rounds in the morning. You can grant access for other users to be able to view your message baskets. To do this under this section that's called attach and covering users, I could open that section up and there's a pencil icon. If I click that, I'm going to get two tabs, one that says attach and the other is grant. So it's a two part process for someone to be able to attach to my in basket. I first have to grant them access. So if I wanted to go in and grant my MA access, I would find my MA's name under the search tool select their name, and then say grant. I'm granting my MA access to see my in basket. Now, the second part of that is my MA would then have to log in and go attach to my in basket. So it's the reverse process where they would go in, 
look for me as the provider who's granted them access already and add them as an in basket. Once I do that, anyone that I am attached to, to see their messages if need be, will fall under this attached and covering users. So right now I'm attached to my MAs in basket as well as mine. So I can see her messages separately from my messages at the top. Any message that you send, uh, if you, you know, think to yourself, oh my gosh, I just sent this message and I honestly can't remember who I sent it to. I can always go back and look at sent messages in my sent message folder. If I done a message or complete it and I'm like, oh, not even sure if I was really done with that, I can go back and grab those done messages and still route them or make a comment or take an action on them if I actually needed to go back to those. So I hope this session was helpful. I will say uh, be patient with InBasket. It takes a little bit of time to learn and M&A will be constantly refining, I'm sure, their workflows to make this work in the most efficient way um, for you. But hopefully this will help you get off to the races. Thank you.